Hello and welcome to a little tutorial series on this channel in which we're going to show you how to set up a cookie consent bar and how to integrate it with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So there will be three videos in this little series and the first video will be all about setting up a cookie consent bar, which nowadays is a requirement if your homepage lives in the European Union because of data protection and privacy laws here. So it's an important thing to have this on your homepage. Then the second video will be all about integrating this consent bar and the cookie settings you make in it with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And I'll show you the old way of doing it. So you can quickly get a opt-in setup of your Google Analytics. Now the third and final video will be about a more future-proof way of setting up Google Analytics. It will use the new consent mode that Google has introduced, I think already more than a year ago or even longer. And yeah, with this mode, you'll get a future-proof implementation of any consent bar with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Okay, so let's not waste much more time. Let's get right into it. So let me quickly show you what we're gonna do in this tutorial. This is my homepage and down here in this area you see the cookie consent bar which I've implemented. And it's fully integrated with Google Tag Manager to allow me to select if I want to have Google Analytics active when I visit the page. So as a user comes onto this page first time, Google Analytics will not be active. So I implemented everything in opt-in fashion. So only once you make your selection down here will Google Analytics either track you or not. So there are two buttons, accept cookies, would just accept any cookies you've set up or you can configure and you see for my homepage, I just have one cookie, which is Google Analytics. Default, it's active. You can disable it. Here's an info button where you get some information and also up here is a link to a privacy policy. Now, if I submit it like that, Google Analytics will not be active on this homepage. So if I submit the selection, we can now go to the developer tools. And here we see there's the consent cookie, which was saved. And as a value, it's an object of key value pairs. You see here is GA4 underscore active. That's how I named the cookie and it's set to false. So if I now go to any other page on this homepage, for example, the shop, you see the consent bar does no longer appear because we already have this cookie set up. Also, you don't see any Google Analytics cookies being created. If I go to the next page, again, Google Analytics still false. So I've set this up to be active for 30 days and 30 days this cookie will no longer be active. And then if I were to enter this homepage again, I would see the consent bar again and I could make a new selection. Let's do this. I deleted the cookie and now here again this is the cookie bar. And if I now just accept it, you see directly there's the cookie consent. GActive is now true. And also here are the Google Analytics cookies, which will now track my interaction with this homepage. So that's what we want to do, an opt-in cookie consent form. And for it, we're going to use the MeBright cookie consent, which is an open source library I created. It's a very simple cookie consent form. You've just seen it and it's easy to configure. So we just have this one call here, create cookie consent. You provide a parent, a div element, then you configure the options you want to have. For example, we just had one option called GA4 with the cookie name GA4 active and some info here we have two in this example. You can have a callback function. So whenever a user submits a setting, a callback is called, which will be very important to connect this to Google Tag Manager, which we also see in a second and which will actually be the focus of this tutorial showing how to easily integrate such a cookie consent form with Google Tag Manager. And yeah, you can give a custom cookie name. So you saw the default, it was constant cookie, but you could change this. Also there's German option, default is English, but you can also have a German option where the buttons would be named differently. This is the base. We not go through how to create such a form. You can just use this form. It's TypeScript, you can also look at the code. It's very simple. So we just assume this is given. You have either this form, your own form or another form, which saves a cookie. 
in a similar fashion like I just shown you. Now what we also going to use, see up here, the home page template. I've used it to create a sample page, a about page, which is empty. And down here you see already the same cookie consent, GA4 with an info button. We're going to go through how to integrate the cookie consent in this page. And then I'm also going to show you how to hook it up with Google Tag Manager. So if you clone or download my MeatPride cookie consent form, what you can do is first npm install to install all the dependencies. So you have the node modules and then npm run build, which will create inside the dist folder here, the minified version of the cookie consent bar. So you see, it looks a bit ugly, but you also see up here, that's the variable name, which we're going to use now to integrate it into the home page, into the about page. So typically what you do, you copy this minified version to your home page and then you have to include it. So if we now go here to the about page, you see down here, there's the script section and here I include a script called base.js. This base.js in my case already includes the MeBright cookie consent JavaScript file. If you don't use my template here, the homepage template, and you want to directly include the consent JS file, you would import it like this, and then you would be able to use it. So we'll continue with the base because there's other stuff included, MeBright search, hamburger navbar, other stuff that the about page uses, but just know MeBright cookie consent is part of it. And down here, I already added a comment. This is where we put the consent code. And I'll now show you what you need to do. First, we'll just implement this consent bar without even thinking about Google Tag Manager. So we just want to have this consent bar being able to select cookies and having the selection stored as a cookie itself. So let's just start by defining a name for our cookie. So we'll create a variable here, call it consent cookie. Also, just as a little info here, this script, we are executing, it's inside the load event for the page. So we call it only after all the rest of the page is loaded. This is how I implement my scripts typically. So I put them at the end of the home page and also just to make sure everything's loaded inside of such an event listener. Then what we want to do, we want to create some main message. This is what you saw above the cookie selection. There was some introductory text. Let's just start by creating a diff element. So let's just call it first for the complete consent bar. So cookie consent bar equals document create element. So we create everything that's part of this consent bar through JavaScript. And this will be a diff. And then what we want to do, we want to set an attribute, cookie consent bar, set attribute. We want to set the ID attribute and just give it a ID of cookie message. So each page will just have one cookie consent bar. So it's okay to use an ID here. And via this ID, we'll also style this consent bar. Okay, with that in place, First thing, we want to add a message into the consent bar. So let's call it main message. Again, document create element. Again, a diff. And here we set the inner HTML to our text here. This website uses cookies, which you can either accept or configure below. Typically this text should include a bit more information, but for the sake of this little demo, I just use this short text here. Now we also need to append this main message into the consent bar, basically add it as a child. So we call cookie consent bar append child and we append the main message. Okay, so with those two in place, Let's quickly also add those to the home page because now we're just created two div elements, one inside the other, but this div element is not yet hooked into the page. So we also need to add it to the page and we just do this by getting access to the body tag, document query selector, and we want the body selector. 
and then we append it. So if we now look at the demo page, we'll see down here at the bottom, there's already the cookie bar. This website uses cookies, which you can either accept or configure below. This is already styled and I quickly want to show you how I did this. Here's my cookie consent as CSS. So this is part of the template already. I not bother rewriting all the CSS code. You can do this yourself. You can put your consent bar in the middle. The only important thing is you see here's the ID, the cookie message, which I style. I set it to the position fixed. It's flex display with column direction, some alignment for the items, and I glued it to the bottom of the page. Also, it will have a complete width of the page. And this is what you currently see if you look down here. So at the bottom of the page, we have the cookie consent bar. Now let's continue to add our consent selector. We'll just sneak this in here before we add everything to the body. And as we learned, my custom library has to be called via Mebrite cookie consent. And then there was this one function, cookie consent. And this function accepts a few arguments. As you've seen the readme, we'll first use the cookie consent bar, which will be the parent. Then we're gonna add our configuration as an array. We'll fill this in in a second. We we'll want a callback function, which will be called if the user accepts the cookies or configures the cookies. And we don't need German here, so we'll leave it at false. Now let's start with the configuration. We want the Google Analytics. So we have a label called Google Analytics. The name of the cookie under which we'll save it is GA4 underscore active. We'll have an information button and let's also set the default value to true. And now here in the callback function, we'll just do a console.log for now. Later, this is where we connect it to Google Tag Manager or call the necessary functions to start tracking with Google Analytics. But for now, just have it right to the console. So we'll just print out whatever consent settings were made. One thing I forgot, we also want to use the cookie name which we defined up here, otherwise this is pointless. And yeah, now this is set up. Let's quickly check the page again. So we have an error. Let's have a quick look what I forgot. So I have a closing bracket, which shouldn't be here. So let's quickly save this. So now you see it renders, we have the text, which we added before, and now also this two buttons. Let's click on configure. And here you see the Google Analytics. Default is true. We click on info, we get the info text. We can deactivate it, activate it. And if we click on submit selection, let's have a look in the developer tools under console, it locked out the cookie. We also see it down here, the cookie is set, consent cookie, gactive set to true. So that's nice. Uh, let me just quickly update it. And here you see it's now false. So typically what we want to do is once a user clicks submit selection, this cookie consent bar should close. So let's quickly implement that part. We can do this directly here in this callback function by just calling cookie consent bar remove, which removes itself here from its parent, from the body. Another thing which we want to do, if there's already a cookie present, we don't want to show this cookie bar again. And there's another function which is exported by this Meepride cookie consent. And this is called Meepride cookie consent get consent cookie. So it will look for this cookie and if there's a value, it will return it. Otherwise it will return undefined. So let's save this cookie and then just have a condition here. If not consent cookie, we'll call this code here. And otherwise we'll for now also just make a console log. Later, we'll also use this area here to do something with Google Tag Manager. Already present. Now let's head back to the page, see what we've done till now. Just refresh it. You see, we already have the constant cookie. So if I refresh now, this doesn't come up. If we go to the console log, constant cookie is already present. That's the value. Let's quickly delete it, refresh again. And here again, we have the consent bar Let's simply accept the cookies as they are. Consent bar is hidden and we also have the consent cookie down here. So sometimes this doesn't directly update. If this happens, you just switch the tabs or just press F5 once more 
and then you will see the cookies. With that working, you already have a cookie consent bar working. If you have your own cookies implemented on your homepage, you can use it to configure those. But the most important thing usually is you want to be able to have opt-in for Google Analytics or any other tags you've configured via Google Tag Manager. And this will now be the core of this tutorial. Okay, that's it for the first video in the series. I hope you liked it. If so, don't forget, leave a thumbs up and yes, yeah, stay tuned for the second video, which I actually might already have uploaded. So yes, yeah, see you in the second video.